is increasing constantly. This is due to advances in pediatric intensive care surgery and uh, pediatry and and uh, as a result of numerous scientific studies, many myths about children's pain have been uh, uh, done away with. Myth number one is about a newborn, newborn babies not being able to feel pain and uh, uh, not remembering it because of the undeveloped brain and nervous system. British doctors have proved that the pain signal comes even to a premature infant brain. A child remembers the pain because the structures responsible for uh, uh, pain memories, the reticular formation and hypothalamus are developed uh, in, in sufficiently enough. Mm. Here are the stages development of pain sensitivity. You can see them on the slide. So you can see that uh, with uh, two through 16 weeks of uh, 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 embryo of embryo development in the, the mother's womb, uh, already at this stage of uh, embryo development, the uh, pain sensitivity is there. 24 weeks of uh, pre pre-birth development uh, feature the ability to perceive and transfer the non-susceptible non impulses. From weeks 29-37 of uh, pre-birth development, the intracerebral connections uh, are developed uh, very intensively. Thus, uh, at, by the 37th uh, week of the embryo development, the perception, transmission and pain reaction are fully formed. The, uh, the next myth is about uh, the ability of children to take up, to endure pain easier than adults. In fact, they perceive it differently and react differently. A stress response to pain due to a weak differentiation of perception develops in a child's organism. Myth number three is about children's ability to get used to pain. In fact, if a child does not manifest any sensations, any painful sensations, that doesn't mean that the, the child does not feel pain. It means that uh, the nervous system is not mature enough to be able to defend from the stress. And so it, ex it gets exhausted quite quickly and uh, it's unable to react. Myth number four is about no long-term effects uh, of pain in small children. It is now proven that the pain in the neonatal period actually has long-lasting consequences and it uh, contributes greatly to the dangers of development of hemorrhages in the brain ventricles. Uh, it causes damage of the white matter of the hemispheres and it can cause uh, cerebral ischemia and can cause uh, the, development, uh, the, the development of persistent phobias, which can last for years and lead to the development of many diseases. What is pain? Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience that leads to an overload of the nervous system and uh, uh, results in its damage in case of long-term influence. An adult can, uh, can describe their subjective perception of pain, while a small child is unable of this. They cannot uh, express. That is why it is essential to be able to diagnose uh, what the child is feeling uh, in order to be able to uh, eliminate the pain. Here are the signs that a child feels pain. Lack of eye contact with the doctor. Indifference to the environment. Tremor of the limbs and chain when touching. 
monotonous rather than emotional shout. Uh, uh, crying can be characterized according to different characteristics such as uh, critical volume, nationality, frequency, duration, painful grimaces like wrinkled forehead, frowning brows, trembling chin, half-closed eyes, uh, trembling chin, yeah. There are certain signs, uh, other signs uh, include great limbs, tonicity, and hands clenched and fists, low limb, tonicity, lethargy, uh, food refusal, vomiting, frequent or rare breathing and pulse, tension of an arteria frontal, sweating palms, the pallor of mottling of the skin, or mottling of the skin. What is pain? Pain is nothing but the information about the abuse in a biological system. This is the signal that calls for the search for means of uh, restoration of damaged organs. We have been given uh, this ability to heal itself uh, by the nature. Orthodox medicine have a great amount has a great amount of medicines of pain killing, but in fact uh, this is not physiological because pain suppression uh, causes the elimination of the information channel, uh, which results in disorganization of the natural mechanisms of uh, self healing and uh, the very um, chemical mechanism of pain killing is, is harmful for, for the organism. We have a great tool that allows us to eliminate pain, to restore damaged systems of the body, and uh, uh, thus we do not violate the laws of nature. This is scanner therapy and scanner devices. Features of scanner therapy in children. First and foremost, uh, it creates friendly atmosphere. A child uh, should feel that he, they are loved and uh, they are safe and kind hands of the doctor and the electrode uh, is, is pleasant to touch. Rhythmic stroking, tender conversation calm uh, children down. The energy level should be low, you know, one to five units. In order to keep the mother sure that her child does not feel pain, you can put the device on her palm first before starting the treatment. <coughs> a child can be treated in the, present, in the presence of their parents or in the arms of their mother. It is also possible to treat children, uh, to treat children while they are asleep. Uh, it is very important to prepare the child for effective treatment. Uh, their nappies should be chosen, uh, should be fresh, and uh, the children should be fed and watered. And uh, of course, the time of the procedure should not be more than 5 to 20 minutes. Um, very often we use a skin art therapy with common disorders like uh, skin rash, diarrhea, cough. Uh, very often uh, there is an acceleration of motor and mental development as a result of the treatment. Uh, I would like to uh, give more attention to classification of pain pathogenetic characteristics. Non-susceptive pain is caused by activation of uh, noticeptors, pain receptors, uh, in case of trauma, inflammation, ischemia, or, or tissue tension. It can be of two types, somatogenic, that is pathological process in the skin, um, mucous membranes, muscles and joints, and uh, it can be of a visceral type, that is the pathological lesion in the internal organs. The second pain type is a neurogenic or neuropathic pain. It occurs uh, alongside with the damage of the central or peripheral nervous system. It is associated with many types of sensory dysfunction. Dysesthesia, 
burning, soothing pain, and others. You can see them all on the slide. Yeah. I would like to say that neuropathic pains in children are much more common with children than with uh, adults. We are very used to adults having back aches, and this is a very common case. Very often, uh, this is the result of dystrophic uh, changes uh, between the uh, vertebral discs. Uh, children commonly don't have these disorders, but uh, we can look a, a little bit differently. American scientists have uh, analyzed a great number of uh, rengenological uh, photos of, of uh, children's spines. Uh, that was a few years ago. And, and they could see that the uh, most common uh, reason of uh, disc damage manifest themselves as early as seven years of age. That is why we can say that all our diseases are results of uh, some disorders that take place in our childhood. As a rule, children are very active. They run, they jump, they play head over heels, they go cycling, skiing, skating, and of course they fall very often. And of course this is not always safe. I'll give just a couple of small examples. A, f a few months ago, I had a three-year-old girl as a patient. She complained about uh, in inability to breathe for uh, around a year. So she wasn't able to breathe and she had runny nose. She had... Um, seen uh, quite a number of specialists before she came to me. The child had been treated with quite a number of medical treatment courses. Um, they used to uh, a great number of drops uh, and the, uh, the scanner therapy was their last choice. I could see a swollen uh, mucus uh, membranes of the nose and I could see some phlegm uh, just uh, down the nose. Could you read the tonsils? I, 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 her tonsils were swollen. Uh, lymphatic nodes, uh, nodes under her uh, lower jaw were swollen as well. When I examined the child, I paid attention to muscle spasms in her neck uh, on the right. The child though, did not react to palpation and the area examined wasn't painful at all. Then I asked then I asked her mother about the presence of any traumas uh, in this uh, neck area, but the mother responded that nothing, nothing of the kind was there. And a few days later, she remembered that about a year ago, the child had fallen off uh, the ladder. The, the falling off the staircase and her fall was quite long, uh, she fell. And the next day, the following day, she also remembered the episode <laughs> the episode of a car crash. Uh, the whole family got into a car crash. But actually the, the, the car was uh, strong enough and the, and, and uh, well, nobody suffered actually, though the car was all broken. So while examining the child, I could notice not only muscle spasms uh, on the neck. I started using the scanner device and... And so the initial reactions on the first... Uh, so the first initial reactions on the face were ten times more effective than those uh, on the on the back. That means that the organ uh, the organism was pleading for help uh, in the area of uh, neck. And since scanner 
the philosophy of scanner therapy uh, corresponds to the holistic medicine philosophy, which does not divide uh, the body into separate parts. So, only having treated the child's neck properly, we were able to eliminate the uh, inflammatory processes in her nose. And one more, uh, one more example of uh, neuro, neuro, neuro. What kind of pain? What kind of pain? Okay, the other example of neuropathic pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the girl came to me uh, complaining of dyspepsia and uh, epigastric pains. Well, uh, diagnosing her with scanner uh, device, uh, we found high... Uh, uh, sa sacral uh, high figures in in sacral area mm -hmm. though she didn't complain about any pains in her back uh, neither while while moving nor at rest and I asked the child about her, her cycle and it turned out to be that she had always had very painful menstruation though they were stable they had been stable for two years the child had seen good doctors uh, who hadn't seen any pathology and she was uh, only recommended to wait using the scanner we we, we managed to heal her sacral area and to rebalance her um, gynecological functions. It turned out that uh, the girl uh, has been uh, riding horses since she was 10. And uh, there were some microtraumas and they could have led to the condition that we had to deal with. One more example. You can see that the, this child uh, feels pain because uh, her hair is, is touched. Or on this slide, we can see that the child uh, feels pain in, in uh, his leg. And very often, uh, the child stops jumping though for no visible reason for no visible reason these are examples of neuropathic pains in children there are also psychogenic pains they are commonly results of psychotrauma so psychotrauma they are accompanied with a sense of anxiety or fear uh, they cannot fo they can follow emotional outbursts the following factors affect uh, the following uh, factors affect the formation of pain personal features uh, anxiety suspiciousness and some psychological patterns laid by parents and the community and the environment different emotions like grief joy anger resentment guilt uh, pa patients with these kinds of pain feature displacement of the conflicts and they tend to avoid uh, solving problems by type of care and disease uh, and uh, they, they tend to compensate for them. Uh, okay, we, we'll not, this is another, uh, another story so we'll just leave it for some other time. What is important for us? It is important to classify pain by duration criterion. The widely recognized gradation is about acute and chronic pains. 
If the pain is lasts for less than three months, it's considered to be acute pain. If it lasts longer than three months, it's called uh, chronic pain. This classification is important for us because in our scanner parameters there are additional settings that allow to get allow us uh, enable us to get uh, quicker effects. Thus. With uh, acute pains, we choose uh, high frequencies and higher intensities. Uh, we choose a DO mode. With, uh, with uh, chronic pains, we tend to choose low fr lower frequencies, uh, lower intensities, and, and we choose both DO and D1 modes. In order to evaluate intensity of pain in children, there are different scales. But these pain, um, these scales are used in intensive care wards uh, in hospitals, in rheumatological uh, uh, departments of hospitals. But we we use very practical scale that is easy to teach to children. So you can see the pain gradation. Uh, the, the, this scheme that you can see on the slide is very easy to teach to the child uh, even uh, of a small age. We can also teach them uh, to use their palm to indicate the level of pain. Uh, but you know, children, um, pain leaves uh, children quite quite quickly. That's why they, they, they start playing with you and after the second or third session of treatment, it is impossible to use this skill. Scale. The success of scanner treatment depends on the tactics properly chosen by a scanner therapist. Uh, the detailed and accurate uh, questioning is, is uh, of utmost importance. We should question not only the child but uh, their parents as well. We should definitely accentuate uh, the um, certain points. We should ask about how long has it been aching and how long, when did it stop and what happened before it stopped and, and whether the child attends any, any institutions. And uh, we should also ask about how it interferes with the patient, parents. Um, what do, they, what, what do they have to do? Whether they have to uh, call the ambulance, draw up a medical certificate, and, and we should all be very sensitive to the dynamics of the complaints. Beside the examination, it is very important to talk to a child's mother, and we should be very sensitive uh, to the behavior of the child if they are interested in toys and books, whether they communicate uh, with other children, because um, during the treatment with scanner device, uh, when while pain and inflammation calm down, the emotional state of the patient also changes. So we need to monitor their uh, condition before and after and during the treatment. It is very important for me to examine the child. I, I call them, uh, I ask them to undress. I examine the, uh, the, the pain points very uh, attentively. If necessary, I examine the pharynx, the nose, the ears, and I, uh, I, I conduct auscultation of the heart and lungs, uh, and I palpate the stomach. Let us consider the most common clinical situations in, pediat in pediatric practice related to pain. The most important disease, the most common disease among children are colds. 
They are common in children aged uh, from five to five years due to the loss of maternal immunity and due to the absence of acquired one. When overcooling, the temperature of the mucous membranes of the nose tonsils decreases. It becomes permeable to viruses and germs, so it gets easier to catch the disease. The first symptom is usually a fever. The child becomes moody, refuses to eat. Uh, they say that everything in their body hurts. We can uh, get a very quick effect if we treat, uh, we use 3.6, uh, 3 3.6 technique in DO mode. You can apply the distillation by using two devices. Uh, as a rule, uh, first session is enough. Uh, very often the child uh, falls asleep during the treatment. Uh, I uh, usually speak with the parents and give some advice about how to reduce the temperature at home. If they have a home use device at their disposal, I give some advice how to use it. But uh, very commonly, there is no temperature rise uh, more than 38 degrees. Here is the technique description um, with two, uh, technique of uh, two devices treatment. Well, I think we'll just skip this for a for the time being, the, the second uh, common uh, pain in children is earache. It is associated with inflammation in the middle ear. Here's the anatomy, here's the uh, middle ear anatomy on the picture. And you can see the uh, middle ear cavity and and you, can, and you can see the channel that connects the middle ear cavity with the um, with the audio channel and very often the inflammation in this area, uh, the, the inflammation of the mucous membranes of the nose uh, lead uh, or cause uh, middle ear inflammation in children. Using the electrodes, cosmetological electrodes, uh, we can we can uh, easily treat uh, both ears uh, uh, of a child. We can get very good effect. We can enhance the effect by adding reciprocal zones. On this slide, uh, you can see the. Reciprocal zones are uh, in the uh, areas of palms and feet. Kids love uh, treatment in the areas of heads and, and feet and they, they're happy. We also love using Pirogov's ring. Here is the animation that shows the pattern, how we use it. The coaxial electrode is too big to be uh, used on a child's neck. That is why we can we can use external electrodes, uh, uh, comb or or we can or we can use uh, the so-called uh, mushroom electrodes. 
So the, the one electrode is held in the uh, in the child's hand, and the other uh, performs the Pirogov's ring. One more very common pain in children is headache. According to statistics, the cause of headache in children uh, are often uh, sinusitis and otitis, uh, as well as uh, uh, as well as migraine or trauma. Though these are not so common. Since the inflammation in this case is sluggish, so we need to look for, 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 for areas of inflammation. And for this, you need to check whether the nasal breathing is, is okay. We need to examine the pharynx. We need to press on the ears to tap the mastoid. In order to find the painful areas on the head and neck, we need to palpate the different parts of the neck. We need to palp the nape of the neck and we will be able to find uh, muscle tensions there. And if you try to tilt or turn the child's head sideways, it is possible to detect the limitation of movement in the neck. A pain during palpation and limitation of movement will serve as a signal of pain. All the zones, all the inflammation zones that we were able to detect uh, are important and, and uh, they can tell us volumes about how to treat the child. We recommend adding the cervical spine, sacrum, buttocks, uh, we recommend to use a comb electrode for the head. Mm -hmm. And a wings technique is also very beneficial. At the end of the session, uh, we need to palpate the identified areas again, and we need to check out the dynamics of pain. We need to rotate and tilt head, and we need to evaluate the dy dynamics of motion. Usually, the headaches quickly leaves the child, the child becomes calmer, and after a while, mothers accidentally discover that the boys are no longer uh, moody in the presence of the hairdresser, and the girls have become more willing to comb their long hair. When migraine attacks are frequent, it is necessary to use scanner. Once the pain resumes, the scanner device must be applied immediately to the sore spot and it must be kept there to reduce pain. In this situation, it's better to learn a mother how to, to teach a mother how to use it. Um, it is uh, essential to um, to combine D1 DO modes, and uh, we should and we should uh, seek how to influence the sensitive points on the head, neck, or abdomen. If there are some active complaints in the process of treating, then you need to deal with them. Abdominal pains are often very, uh, also very common with children. They may be acute, chronic, and recurrent. We have already named the conditional uh, temporal boundaries of acute and chronic pains. Recurrent pains tend to repeat for three months uh, at least three times. Uh, in acute abdominal pain, it is necessary to recognize a dangerous situation and decide whether or not an emergency surgery is required. Uh, uh, very often, the uh, the whole future of the child uh, fully depends on the doctor's decision. 
that's why a carefully uh, examined history of the child and their background is the only key to the correct tactics. Very often we need the consultation of the surgeon. Uh, we, we may need the... Uh, in fact, I have never ac come across such a situation. Though, when I worked as a pediatrician in a child care hospital, uh, during my duty hours uh, several times, uh, there were children brought to, to the hospital with clinical signs of uh, sharp pain in their abdomen. What should be remembered? Uh, the worst reason for these uh, acute pains in small children is, uh, is intestinal constip. Sorry? Uh, due to the constipation in their intestines. Mm -hmm. What is the most characteristic for this condition? A uh, very uh, sharp uh, uh, beginning, uh, with, without any reasonable, uh, without any uh, visible reasons. Spasms in the abdomen and uh, repeated vomiting and the uh, blood noticeable in this tool. And while palpating the abdomen, we can uh, discover the tumor-like uh, hardening. In children older than one year, uh, uh, acute appendicitis is, is uh, quite possible. It is characterized with a constantly growing pain that appears in the AP or a mesogastro. It is accompanied by vomiting reflex and after some time it moves to the right iliac region. Um, after the operation, the, the pain subsides, subsides but uh, in case peritonitis uh, takes place uh, or the perforation takes place, uh, the, the symptoms of uh, endotoxemia uh, grows, grow. Uh, what, we, what, what we need to have in mind, we need to have in mind the nature of the pain and its change over the time and uh, we should always be sensitive to the pain dynamics. Let's uh, uh, speak about abdomen pain treatment in more detail. We need to palpate the abdomen while closely watching the reaction of the child so that we can find uh, the painful area. We should localize it, we should define its borders, we should select uh, the, the, the site of soreness with maximal precision. We should increase the perimeter of the treatment area and we should treat it in uh, DO mode uh, following the general vector. After treatment, we again palpate the painful area and note the dynamics of pain. If pain persists, we define the borders of uh, the symmetrical area and work on it in DO mode. We again palpate the first zone and define the pain dynamics. If the pain still persists, we use the centimeter tape uh, uh, and we find the corresponding segment of the spine and uh, we treat it in the O mode.
If pain still persists, we make the local scanner vaccination at the pain of at the pain point. Uh, as for the treatment of the recurrent abdominal pains, in uh, children of the first uh, year of life, it usually appears uh, as a form of intestinal colic. These pains are due to physiological immaturity of the gastrointestinal tract and combined with a maximal functional loading on the intestine, which is associated with a large volume of food children have to con consume. Their symptoms are anxiety and crying, uh, tension in their legs and bloating, uh, that decreases after the discharge of gases. Mm. At the same time, children uh, will uh, gain weight and uh, they are positive and they have normal stool. Among other children, the cause uh, of uh, the pains may be in the inflammatory condition of the gastrointestinal trust, tract uh, of different departments. In addition to abdominal pain, there may be complaints about the feeling of fullness, belching, nausea, and so on. So we recommend, we recommend to treat the entire abdominal area following the rules of the L mode. Um, we uh, should treat the herringbone as a re reciprocal zone. We should also uh, treat the projection of the liver and pancreas, and we should use three path six points technique. I would like to cite a few examples from my practice. A boy, nine years old. Um, at the examination, he was crying and screaming because of the stomach ache. His grandma took him to the doctor and she said that the, st the stomach uh, uh, ached suddenly after school. We start treating the first route. We, um, we treat six points in the O mode, which follows with a sharp vomiting, and after that the state of health completely returns to normal. Since the complaint uh, was no longer there, I, pros uh, I treated horizontals on the back, and I, where I could see the signs of smaller asymmetry, and so the session was over. The pain never returned. Another example. A boy aged seven. For a week, he uh, suffered uh, soft stools with mucus. Uh, defecation took place up to three, four times a day. He didn't feel any pain. And uh, palpation also revealed no pain. Uh, Treatment of stomach in uh, DO mode. So his stomach was treated in DO mode and uh, that was the end of the session. This tool became normal. Example number three, a child aged five who suffers from severe spastic form of cerebral palsy. He had no stool uh, for two days, which caused him uh, worry. Uh, on examination, his abdomen was tense and swollen. I treated the liver and pancreatic areas in the O mode. A few seconds later, I could hear uh, the, uh, the sound of a brook. Uh, which is a very common sound uh, produced by the bile tracts. Then gases appeared, the abdomen became soft, and, and, and uh, after an hour the baby calmed down and there was a defecation. Did you hear the, the sound of a brook in the upper or in the lower part of the abdomen? 
That was heard in the upper part of the abdomen. One more example. A boy um, 18 months uh, old. He lives in another town. He was born with atresia of the anus. In the first year of life, he uh, underwent several phases of surgical correction. As a result, uh, an adhesive disease uh, developed, which was manifested by sudden severe abdominal pains, vomiting, lack of stool. He uh, had to have uh, two operations because of that. At the time of the ex examination, there were no complaints. Uh, during the palpation of the abdomen, the child was watching my actions with fear, and I found a few areas of severe morbidity, which caused the boys to the boy to, to cry. Pain zone coincided with the projections of uh, adhesions. I worked with them. Uh, I, I treated them in the DO mode until I could notice significant decrease of the pain. Uh, I also treated uh, 3 past 6 points on in the O mode. Uh, the child fell asleep and the session was over. There were no complaints during the second session and his mom uh, noticed that uh, the boy got better appetite. Um, painful areas uh, were still in the same place. The pain intensity was decreased. Uh, but he was watching, the baby was watching me very carefully. I worked on the 3P6.0 in D1 mode. The child fell asleep and su subsequent sessions, palpation of the abdomen uh, did not reveal any dynamics uh, of, of pain. Uh, the dynamics of pain was positive, it decreased. Um, uh, I go on uh, working on the abdomen in the L uh, mode. I do small crosses, males. I uh, treat herringbone. Um, on the sixth day of treatment, there is uh, uh, exacerbation. A child does not sleep at night, cries, refuses to eat. Uh, uh, the child mom stops herself from, from calling ambulance. Early in the morning they come to the clinic. We work in uh, DO, 1D, 6P modes and horizontally on the back, as a result of which the child calms down. I, I find uh, I, I find local pain in the abdomen and I completely uh, eliminate it in the DO mode and end up the session. Aggravation I, am, I performed three more sessions and completed the course, uh, after which uh, the child returned uh, to his home city and for the past two years abdominal pains did not bother him at all. I would like to say a few words about child injury, injuries. Well, statistically, uh, boys uh, get injured more frequently than girls. Uh, domestic and street traumas prevail. The most frequent trauma uh, are, are injuries and damage to the skin without disrup disrupting its integrity. On the second place there are open wounds uh, and on the third place there are dislocations and sprains. And we often have to deal with bumps and bruises. And the first thing to do is to ask the child where it hurts. It is necessary to treat the pain. And nothing complex afterwards. If if uh, there is a headache, 
we look for trigger points, we palpate the head, the neck, we look for the trigger points and we treat them in the O mode. And thus we eliminate a headache. If uh, there is a pain in the arm, we treat the arm. If there is a stomach ache, we treat the stomach. This is always an acute situation, and in this case, we opt for the O mode. That's about it. Questions? Do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.